Hi, Taylor Marshall here with the Canterbury Tales blog. I'm excited because today I have in my hands the very first printed copy of the new book, The Eternal City, Rome, and the Origins of Catholic Christianity. It's the third book. There's this behind there. It's the third book in the Origins of Catholicism trilogy. The first book was The Crucified Rabbi. That's it right there. And uh, it talks about how Catholicism derives from a Jewish worldview and Judaism. And uh, it's, it's been very popular, and it was followed up by the Catholic perspective on Paul. That's the second one in the series. And it examines how Christ appointed Paul, but also St. Peter, but especially Paul to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. And so you see a movement from the Jewish people to the Gentiles. And then that leads us to the third book, The Eternal City, which is how Christ chose a pagan empire, Rome, as prophesied by Daniel, to be the instrument by which he would save the world. And uh, this, this book in particular discusses why is the Catholic Church Roman? Why must it be Roman? You would think that the Catholic Church would be centered in Jerusalem, but it's not. It's centered in Rome, and it is to this day. Uh, the book begins with the prophecies of the prophet Daniel and the four kingdoms, and how that relates to the Messiah coming and assuming that fourth kingdom as his own, which of course is the Roman kingdom, the Roman Empire, and uh, using it for the purposes of its church. We also talk about how the Jews entered into an alliance with the Romans. Uh, we read about that in the books of the Maccabees. It's very important, sometimes often forgotten, but it's important um, to remember that prior to the New Testament, the Jews were already linking up with the budding Roman Empire. We talk about uh, the significance of Christ being born under Caesar, being crucified under Pontius Pilate. We also look at the claim, did Peter really establish the church in Rome? Of course he did. Plenty of evidence on that. I mean, there's a really big chapter in here on the tomb of St. Peter and the discovery of his remains there underneath St. Peter's at the Vatican Hill uh, and the Scalvi tour that you can see to this day. It's a, a full treatment on the historicity of the claim that Peter was buried right there under the altar in St. Peter's. There's St. Peter right there. Uh, also look at the first five popes. The significance of Rome destroying Jerusalem in A.D. 70. The significance of Constantine's conversion, or maybe lack of conversion, uh, in the Roman Empire becoming officially Christian and Catholic. And then finally a chapter on St. Augustine's book, The City of God, and how it relates to Rome. Rome is the eternal city, but obviously Rome is not our final destination. The new Jerusalem in heaven is. So, and then there's some appendices, and um, the book also ends with a guide. If you ever go to Rome as a pilgrim, and you want to see all the great things that are listed in this book, it tells you where you can go to find the relics of certain things, certain Roman monuments, certain churches. Uh, it'd be a good book to put in your suitcase if you ever go to Rome, because you'd have a Catholic guide to the city of Rome. So uh, it's a fun book. I love it. I had a great time writing it. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in theology and how the Old Testament relates to the New, this is the book for you. But if you're interested in history and specifically the classical world and all things Roman, and uh, you're wondering how is it that a religion that arose from the Jewish people and has a Jewish Messiah became Roman, this is the book. So uh, it's not yet available in stores or on Amazon.com, but it will be soon. So look for it. I'll make an announcement on the blog um, when it can be pre-ordered on Amazon.com. And I uh, look forward to it. So thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoy the books. And uh, check back later. Bye.